Understanding how cancer starts from a single cell and then grows into a tumor is fundamental to one day preventing the disease. And as much as we think we know about cancer, new theories are cropping up that may change how we treat the disease. Let's start with our current understanding of cancer. Through a sequence of random mutations to its DNA, a single errant cell loses the ability to regulate its own growth. One mutation may push the cell to divide too rapidly, while others bypass one of the cell's built-in safety mechanisms, silencing the signals that normally restrain growth in overactive cells. So, with its accelerator floored and its brake line cut, the cell and its daughter cells continue to divide, accumulating more mutations and defeating more safeguards. The result is a tumor, an expanding mass of these malignant cells. As the mutated cells continue to multiply, they can invade neighboring tissues and metastasize, spreading to other parts of the body. But maybe cancer is even more clever than we believed in exploiting our body's own mechanisms. Microbes are tiny creatures, bacteria for example, 90% of the cells in our body are these single-cell microbes. In most cases, our own cells get along well with these creatures. For example, bacteria in our intestines help us by breaking down the food we've eaten and give off essential compounds for our use. In return, we give the bacteria a nice warm home and an all-you-can-eat buffet. In order to live together in harmony, cells in our body communicate with the microbes, sending signals back and forth. But what if a message between a microbe and the body gets mistranslated? That miscommunication might be the signal that's needed for a cell to start rapidly dividing, causing cancer of the colon, stomach, esophagus, and other organs colonized by microbes. Another possibility? So-called junk DNA. Our cells contain a vast library of DNA but only a fraction of it holds the essential information needed for our body to make enzymes and other proteins, the key components of our cells. The other 98% was believed to be mostly junk, useless, nonsensical code. But maybe this junk is more of a loose cannon than we think. Some believe that junk DNA may sometimes send out signals that offset the delicate balance between a healthy cell and a malignant one. It may tip the scales of self-regulation until a cell turns cancerous. The last of these ideas is a little more complex. Remember Bio 101? There, you probably learned that the central idea of molecular biology is that information encoded in our DNA is copied by something called messenger RNA. Then, like your local mailman, messenger RNA carries DNA's message to ribosomes, little factories that use the information to build the all-important proteins we need. Lurking behind the scenes are tiny things called microRNA. For a long time it seemed that these molecules were nothing more than a bit of static in RNA's message to the ribosome. But research suggests that in cancer they have a more sinister effect. MicroRNA can bind to a gene's messenger RNA and prevent the DNA's message from ever reaching the ribosomes. Sort of like slashing the tires on your mailman's truck. Or maybe microRNA can even intercept the mail and change the message. Then, when that altered message is sent to a healthy cell, it may be just enough misinformation to change it into a cancerous cell. Researchers are still working to understand how important these mechanisms are in creating a cancer. But understanding how cancer begins is key in developing successful strategies, both to fight cancer and to prevent it from ever forming. Till then, what is clear is that there are a lot of processes in our body that could be conspiring against us. Trying to outwit cancer may be much more complex than we imagined. <laughs>